All right, excellent. You just completed the lecture about one of the most popular finance models, the CAPM. In this lecture, we will simply reproduce the exercise in which we calculated Procter & Gamble's expected return in Python. Here is the formula. The variables on the right side are the risk-free rate, the beta of P and G, and the risk premium. Let's work the expression. The expected return of the stock I am interested in, P and G, will differ from the risk-free rate with an amount equal to the product of its beta and the risk premium. And it makes sense when you think of it. There is a certain premium that investors require for undertaking a risky investment. The way we calculate this premium is by measuring how risky a stock is regarding the market, measured by data, and multiplying this by the average premium for investing in the market. Let's call PGER the expected return of Procter & Gamble and then calculate its value. We can get an approximation of the risk-free rate from Bloomberg's website. Look at the line corresponding to the 10-year government bonds. Its yield is approximately 2.5%. That's the value we will use as an approximation for risk-free. There isn't such a thing as a risk-free asset in the real world, but 10-year government bonds are a close enough approximation. We calculated beta in our previous Python lecture. We had stored the value in PG beta. Okay. Finally, we must add the risk premium. Previous research shows 5% is a credible value we can use. Hence, we will apply it to our calculation. Let's run this cell. The value we obtain is 5.6%. This is the return on investment a person would expect when buying P&G stock. This technique can be applied for any listed company you are interested in. And the best part is that now, you have all the tools that would allow you to do that.